play over here about something. You just have to look at it, right? Yeah. 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 I was like, yeah. And just keep going back to what yeah. you were doing. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Hey, Tina.
Thanks, buddy. Hey, bro, text Rob because I told him to get some chairs from downstairs, but there are they're all up here. <laughs> right there. Hey, they brought them all in. Thanks. I think I all right good morning good morning how's everybody doing great right. well, i appreciate you guys coming on time and uh, we have a very uh, really good training today i think it's going to be very important um on your progression in terms of becoming great at the kitchen table and uh, skills pay the bills, right? So mm -hmm. um, I wanted to uh, start with something before I go into our presentation <laughs> or training, which we're going to call Sticker Shop today, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I'm like excited about. Uh, Samir sent me an article yesterday. You know, some, some of you guys know. You know, I think everybody has vices in here, right? Some are good, some are bad, some <laughs> some replace you know certain addictions with other addictions you should always try to replace bad addictions with good addictions right I mean, that's usually you know kind of a mantra of life good habits with bad habits um so in my previous life right <laughs> and even even some of my you know current life Right, but very, very seldom. I love. I like gambling. I love to gamble. I love it. I love. I love. I love. Uh, I love casinos. I love poker chips. I love cars. I love blackjack. I love just the environment of gambling. I love football, sports gambling, lines. I love it. I. I mean, it's. I. I twitch when I see it. Like, yeah. It's, it's bad. Okay. Peter knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Terrible, it's a terrible advice for me. It really is because just the environment, the people, the thinking, the stress, the anxiety—it's not good. Okay, um, in, I, you know some people probably can gamble moderately and things like that. That's not. But, um, so Samir sent me an article yesterday about this guy, um, and he he uh, is like he left. Chicago and and you know moved to Vegas and became a professional gambler and you know and on social media he's posting all these things about all his winning tickets and uh, all this stuff. Anybody read about this? You're talking about uh, Dan Blazerian? Well, well, then, no, this is this guy's <laughs> called Rob Gordetz. Oh, okay, you can look him later. Okay, you know, I thought it was too. But um, and and. He's like got pictures with athletes and Drake and all these things and showing all these things. And he has like, and he's not, he's not a handicapper. He doesn't know anything about the sports. Okay. So there's certain people, they know about the sports. They do research and they, they give you a pick and they say, Oh, I think the chiefs are going to win because this, their starting line, they allow this many, all this stuff, the weather, all, and they, they give you a detailed analysis. And you know, you may buy the pick or people follow him and this and that, right? And then he posts oh, well, all these things, you know, last year in this casino, I, I paid, I, I placed $27 million worth of bets and I won, you know, one and a half percent above that, whatever it is, right? And everybody's following him and showing text messages from athletes, like, you're not athletes, but uh, celebrities. And, and they're like, well, you know, what makes you different? And he's trying to create this new 
young, this young uh, vibe of like, I'm, I, I just bet nobody can, you know, I, I go on gut. And he's taking the gambling world by storm, right? I read this article, it was fascinating. I mean, it was just like, move the babies. I mean, I mean, this guy is decked out, Louis jackets, Supreme yeah. watches, everything. And they're just like, man, and he's showing, he's like, man, it's a lifestyle. And he's just everything, right? And then, and then, uh, so he reads the article, I was like, yeah, your article is crazy. And he goes, read this. And he's like, oh, he's going to jail. Wow. <laughs> because he defrauded an investor okay so he, he sold this thing to an investor he's saying i'll invest your money in the stock market okay for 10 million dollars wow. this guy took 10 million dollars from somebody and posted these things on social media wow all these things that they bought and you know like I, I think about these things and I mean this I'm, you know I want to get serious for a second like social media is fake right I'm, I'm just gonna tell you that right now I'm not are there good things on there absolutely okay there are now can people use it for a lot of positive things definitely okay but the stuff that's making you Okay, and the stuff that you're probably looking at, people flashing money, all those things, it's not real. Okay, it is so freaking fake. And it, it, it bothers me so much, right? And I, like I said, even if I read it, I'm, you know, you know, you're really like, oh, wow, maybe I, maybe it's, it's, I'm overthinking it. Maybe I could just put a hundred thousand. He's like, I bet on volleyball <laughs> games and high school basketball games. It's, it's a fraud. He's a fraud, man. He's a freaking fraud. He stole tech. You should go to, you should be put to death for taking $10 million from somebody. Yeah. Not a hundred, not a thousand. You took $10 million from somebody so you could freaking spend it on Louie and Gucci and, 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 yeah, I go to these private poker games at these in L.A. I'm flying and pictures on your jet. You took $10 million? And, and, and listen, I probably should post more. Okay? I probably, when I say post on, on our stuff, okay? I'm not on social media. Okay? But I probably should post more. Because I want you to understand what's possible, but my dad just didn't raise me that way. Like I believe in something like you can be jinxed, right? Like that's just, that's what I believe. Like I, I, you know, like I until it's done, you don't talk about it. Like until you've finished the race and you won, don't celebrate. Until you get in the end zone, don't even do anything. Until the it's zeros on the clock, don't celebrate. Because I've seen people come back 4-0, right? I remember in seven minutes. We beat somebody in a, in, a, in a soccer game. It was 2-0 with seven minutes left, and we beat them, and we scored three goals in seven minutes, which was insane to, to win our league, right? And I've seen it, right? So I, I'm like, I, I always play scared and paranoid, right? But thank God, thank God I had somebody that mentored me that really understood money, saving money, putting money away, Paying your taxes, not buying stuff. So you can feel good for a second and then feel bad. Because remember, when you buy stuff that you cannot afford, or even worse, if you spend future money today to buy things that you really can't afford. And here's the thing. I'm very qualified to talk about this because I lived way below my means for years Okay, for years. In 2006, I, I made over $200,000 a year. Okay, I was 26 years old. I was making $20,000 a month. I had almost zero expenses. I just had office expenses, which are probably two or 3,000. I was saving 15 to $18,000 a month. I never ate out. I spent, I, when I did my taxes that year, my, my bill, restaurant bill, okay, that I deducted, my 
food and expenses bill was $340 for the entire year. I lived at home with my mom and dad, okay? My mom and dad don't live in a 15,000 square foot home, right? My parents, they waited till I moved out to renovate the basement. You know what I'm saying? So I lived in a dungeon, literally. Okay? There's probably asbestos in there. I got something right oh now. Oh my God. Okay, I have something right now. Okay? I mean, I, my call did everything. I'm just going to call them. Okay? I got something. I'm going to file a claim, a settlement. Oh my parents, God. Okay? I drove hand me down cars. Okay? I'm an RVP. I have my own office. I got two diamonds in my ring. I'm not making three to five grand a month. I'm running my own business. I have my own lease. Nobody tells me what to do. So, I, I mean, I, I have the opportunity to be confident. And I was, but I drove a 1995 Honda Accord. That was the car I drove in high school because I didn't want a payment. That car died. There was another 1996 Honda Accord <laughs> laying around at the house. So I picked that up. 2011. Okay, I had been making $200,000 a year for five years. For five years. Five years. Finally, I upgraded my car to a Toyota Camry. I lived in apartments. I lived in my dad's townhouse because it was paid off. And I said, Dad, I'm trying to save money. Can I just pay you the taxes? Because my dad's like, the house is paid off. Because my dad is, is like me on a whole nother level, okay? Way more successful than I am with money, a wizard financially. And I said, Dad, can I, can I go to your town? I think about it. I got married. My wife is not like I am, right? And, and, and if you're like me, right, you're, you should sell your partner the dream, which I always was. And I was selling the dream, but we weren't living the dream. I'm saying, hey, look, don't worry about it. Well, we, we have money. You know, my wife does the taxes, not me. I don't do them. She does it, right? She's better at organizing all that stuff. And she's like, we have money. Why can we get a house? I'm like, yeah, not right now. She's like, okay. And I'm like, just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. You know, I go, I move into my dad's home. Right, old townhouse. My dad bought that house when I was born, 1980. Okay, so it's 30 years old. I'm making 200 for five years. Not one year, it wasn't a fluke. Five years. I move into my dad's house. I said, Dad, can I just pay the taxes? Right, which is whatever I gave him a little bit extra, but not, my, not what the, the rental was of the guy. I just want to save for a little bit longer. Then move to Florida. Rented a house, moved back, rented a house, bought a house. My house that finally we built a house, it was a $650,000 house, okay? At this time I had that much money in cash, saved up. I have brokerage accounts, I have college savings, everything. Primerica stock, business, RVPs at this time. And I Finally, we get a little semi cuss Now, I don't even want to call it a track house, but we built it right. Six hundred fifty. That you guys, if you guys ever came, you know, I had no furniture in the house. <laughs> I didn't even furnish the house. We didn't. We had the pay, the 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 stick up blinds. I was like, no, nah, I'm not. No, not right now. This time, I'm making three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand dollars a year. And then finally, in two thousand, and then yes, in two thousand fifteen, I got a car. I got a car. That's a that's a that's a fifty thousand. It's a I, out the door. I paid sixty, but I traded my other car, right, which was paid off. It's a fifty thousand dollars. A couple, you know, fifty thousand dollar car. I didn't get a hundred twenty. I didn't get two. You know, and I, like people like I was talking to somebody. I interviewed somebody the other day. I was talking to them. I forgot. Maybe I was on a Zoom with one of you guys, and they're like, "Well, you know, this, you know, something, you know." He, he, he has a car or something. He's like, so I knew he made money. Oh, I was talking to the, you know, our guy, um, young kid, high school kid, real nice guy, right? And he was, and he was like, well, you know, he was trading options, so 
he does really well because he bought a car. He goes, so if you have a car, you do well. And I didn't say it like that. I was talking to him, right? So it was just me and him. And he goes, well, I think so. <laughs> I was like, so if you don't have a car, you don't do well. And he's like, well, and you know, I'm trying to just teach him how to think a little bit, right? Because my job is to help you get ahead financially, right? Yep. Like, not, not look like you have money, not feel bad about yourself for making purchases that you can't afford. And not feeling bad for living below your means. Look, everybody in the world, everybody, almost 99% of people out there, even broke people, they live above their means. It's un-American to live below your means and save money. And I got that, the Mercedes, and then, yes, in 2018, bought my house. I have more money in cash than the house. I can easily just write a check. And I don't want you to ever th follow people because they're they ain't paying their taxes. They're going to go to jail. And, it, it, and it's not just people flashing stuff. Okay, Obviously, people do that. They buy stuff. They, they, I, look, man, people buy fake clothes. I mean it. But, you know, like, you guys know, I like to lift. I, you know, I like to, you know, so, like, we send videos, and I like to, I like it, right? I mean, it's just something I like to do, right? So, that's fake, too. <laughs> the weights are literally fake. I'm like, that's fake. And then, like, I, I told you, there's, like, this one investigator, and he'd go, and he'd be like, oh, so you squat, you, you can incline bench 480? Okay, do 380. They can't do it. And they're like, oh, well, I, I'm not warmed up. Like, you're faking it. <laughs> Because they, they, they do all these things, right? And just to appear, right? And it's, it's, it's just such, it's so bad. Like, look, man, I know, I know, I know we're in this bubble, and I'm telling you to save money, and I'm telling you to fully fund your IRA, and I'm telling you to have a savings goal and save 5000 a month and 10000 a month and all those things and, and, and get $50,000 into your IRA or $100,000 in, in, in a mutual fund because I'm telling you, that's the most important thing that I could ever give you. Okay, it's not even what I've done with my business. It's, it's live below your means, man. And when is it okay to buy something? Well, you know, you freaking negotiate for it. You never pay full price for it. You get it on sale. You never overpay for anything. You have that much money saved up. You buy a car when it's two months your income. You want a sixty thousand dollar car? You make thirty thousand dollars a month. You want a house when you can when that's your annual income. That's when you should buy it. You can do a 15-year mortgage. You can put 20% down. Then you really have money. You don't look like you have money, and you're going to go broke in three years, and tax man is going to come after you, and you're going to start feeling terrible. This is not that business, man. And I don't care what you have to do, all right? You know, you don't. your badge of honor here is not not making money. Okay, if you got to do DoorDash or or work at a restaurant, yeah, that's that's the price you pay. Look, and this is our Friday meeting. I what, man? You know, like my dad, he he had the, the talk with me, right? He's like, "What are you doing?" And I felt so embarrassed. And and I'm not saying this is the best way to do the business, right? But you guys know what I did, right? I, at home, I was just never at home. I would go knock doors. I, that's what I did. I knock on doors. I just knock and say, hey, man, can you help me out with the survey? And I did that for freaking three years. So you think I, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I remember, you know, you guys know this story, right? One time, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to make it, I'm, you know, and I knocked on someone's door. It was my friend. And I had my little folder and I put it in my thing and I was like, oh, yeah, I just came to see what's up. I didn't know they lived there. <laughs> and they go, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, no, I was trying, yeah, what's up, man? That's how embarrassed I was. And it turns out, right, because I'd spent too much time in that stupid house, Donald, hanging out with my buddy. I went to go out and get my car. I got towed. And I didn't even know how I was going to pay it because it was like $130. Mm. And I was like, damn it, man. My car got towed. So I'm sitting here talking with this guy, right? I'll never forget that. And this isn't a competition, right? Well, it's always a competition. <laughs> but where do you think they are? Where do you think I am? I'm not saying it like 
at the end of the day, it's all about your family. It's all about financial independence. But you think that little blip on the radar, that, that little thing of embarrassment, you think that matters? You think everybody that made it big in any, I remember Jamie Dimon, you know, Jamie, he's the CEO of JP Morgan, right? Him and Sandy Wild, they purchased Primerica, right? They built Citigroup. And they started because they were so broke. And, and Sandy Wild, they got fired from American Express. They started in Baltimore. Because Baltimore is cheap. No financial companies were really there when they started it. And they could get office space and all this stuff. And Jamie Dimon was so notorious for cutting costs. He took cough, uh, the cream and sugar from the coffee maker. Because he's like, look, we need to cut costs. We do not have money. And Sandy Wild and these, these Sandy Wild built Citigroup at 59 years old. And they lived, they lived a little apartment, the two of them, in downtown Baltimore. And you guys got that, you know, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying to, to anger you, I'm saying, look, this is part of the price, man. You, you don't have it, don't spend it. If you really want it, save your money for it. And then guess what? You won't really want it because you don't want to part with that money. And, you know, it, it just it, it just it just rocked me so much reading that, right? Because, I look, it was it, 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 I love the way Samir delivered it to me because he read it. He knew he knew I would react. <laughs> I'm going to Vegas, man. I want a Supreme hoodie too, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, I think I can bet 100000 on the Super Bowl, right? That's true, right? Hey, easy money, easy come, easy go. Dude. You don't have to work for it, you don't blow the money. That's why these people steal money. Right? You work for it, you, you value it, you donate it, you give it away, you share with other people. Why? Because you earned it. I had no qualms telling you to save your money. I, I, I'm never, I, this is why I always tell people, you guys, if anybody ever knows me, I never ask you to do things I haven't done. Now, and if I do, if I say, hey, Sean, no, I'm not really good at this, so talk to somebody else. But if it's something that I'm good at, I will tell you, I did it. That is my leadership philosophy. Don't tell people to do things you are unwilling to do or have not done. I, I hope you guys can do what I've done. I'm not telling you to do I, I was married. I had a child. My son, I'm making 200. Ask my wife. I didn't even go to toy stores. I went to Goodwill. I go to Goodwill. The toys are one dollar. My wife's like, what the what are you doing? <laughs> we have money. I said, you know, I'm just not there yet. These are toys, man, for my little boy. And then, yes, now, you know, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, because I saved money for a long period of time, and I made money for a long period of time. And I don't have to really feel bad about it or guilty about it. And, yeah, I can't, I'm not on a private jet, and I don't have a Ferrari, but I got that much money in my bank account. I can write a check right now. I can go get a Lamborghini, whatever kind you want. 500 I can write it. Whatever you, whatever. I can go go to the dealership right now. And I, I wouldn't have to finance. I went to qualify. I could write out my, my mutual fund. I wired it one day and I can write a check half a million. And that's not me to break. You know, look at me. I'm, I wear shoes and jeans every single day, right? I drive the van more than I drive my car. But I have money in the bank. I have a big business. I have passive income. I don't have to work for money because of this company. And so I just you know, want to start with that because you guys just always remember that. I know, and, and this is just one story. You guys are probably seeing this stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. All this fake social media bullshit that you see all the time. People posting all these things that get in your mind all fun. Because you just go out, do your inventory at the end of the year. Did my mutual fund go up? Okay. Did I put money in? How much are my contributions? That happened, the things are going to happen. So, anyway, sorry, right, pull up the presentation. Um, all right, so we are going to talk about. Quoting people. Okay. So, iPad. 
Anybody wait on a purchase because they just don't feel ready? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does this feel like, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't feel, I feel guilty spending that much. Right, computer, 800 bucks, right? iPad, $500, whatever it is, right? Like I have some things I want to buy, I'm like, oh, I'll wait till they go, right? It's a, you should always feel like that, especially for a major purchase. So we are going into a home and we're asking a client to spend $75 a month. That's $900 a year, $100 a month. That's $1,200 a year, $200 a month. That's $2,500 a year. Just understand what you are going in for, okay? And if they're not ready for it, right? And, and, and just like, you know, just like you are, when you make a purchase, there's a waterfall, right? And, and when you go over the waterfall and you say, I need this car, and you've made the decision, then what happens? Then you justify buying it, okay? When you say, I need this, oh, no, 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 I need this. You may not fixate on the dollar amount, but the, the decision is made. I am purchasing the car. And now you'll work backwards and you'll figure out how you can obtain the car, okay? So our job is to get the client to think like that. I need this policy. I need this policy. And so we do that through questions, commitments, showing that they waste money, stories, visuals. And I always go with history so you understand, right? The process, Debbie, worked like this when I first started, right? You could not quote people. It was impossible, okay? Uh, I don't want to say impossible, but you had to be a genius, like a mathematician to run a quote, okay? Because you had the table, you had the age, you had the rating table, you had the cost per thousand, you had to subtract the policy fee. You did it all manually. Some of y'all would take two weeks, okay? It might take me 30 minutes, but I mean, literally, like, you guys, it would be wrong, okay? So finally, Donald, our company came out with software and you could enter it in and run a quote, but you couldn't do that with a client because you didn't have internet. They had dial up. I'm telling you, it was weird. Okay. So what we did was we sold them on the plan, the FNA, the need. Hopefully they had a policy because then you could take the policy, you could analyze it, you get a dollar commitment. So I say, hey, you know, Tyrone, how much could you put towards a plan? And your your goal was at, to get five percent of their monthly income committed to their program. So if they make $10,000 a month, they should put away $500. That's between both of them. They should put five. So you knew you were going to get an, an insurance policy because within 5%, you should get insurance, right? So you got the commitment for 500. And then if you got smart, you got competitive, competitively intelligent, like I talked to you guys about, you would start knowing the numbers a little bit because I, you know a 38-year-old is going to be about $60 a month for half a million. You start knowing these numbers. So you, you could even throw it out there. Well, I, you know, I'm not sure exactly how much it would be, but, you know, and you throw up a little bit. Like, yeah, I know it's not, you know, you'd be able to do about $75 each because you knew it was going to be 100 So if they say 150 you were good. You were in the clear. Then you come back with a proposal. You get them to apply. Well, now it's a different story. Now you can run a quote in 30 seconds. Now you can present all the information. It's all there. It's all technology. You're, you're, you can show a video. You can bring all these things. Everything we do, speed, 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 speed. And the technology in the quote is the three-point line in the NBA. You're not shooting threes. You're behind. You're not, you're not going to stop people. you got to outscore them. Okay? Because and, and, you know, NBA teams are scoring 120, 130 points a night. Overtime could be 140, 150. Players, James Harden. James Harden, guy can't even jump, is averaging 38 points a night. That's Michael Jordan, the greatest player ever. That's Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest scorers ever. James Harden can do the – that is the three-point line. Right, so we, you have to close on the first. You have to. Now, is it okay to not close on the first, Ramon? Yeah, it's okay. 
And there are many times you're not, but this is a whole different animal to close on the first. Okay. And we got to close without being pushy. We got to close with being pleasant. We got to close being smart. So we're going to talk about um, quoting people okay, and how to run the quote and you know, how to prepare the client to move forward on the term <coughs> application. All right. But there are a couple things that you need to do uh, before that. All right. Uh, number one, okay, you, you have to read the client. Okay, you have to look for every signal, every question. You're not just going through it. You can't lead people if you can't read people. That's what I always say to people, right? So you, you, you have to be able to see how they're answering questions, why they're asking. It, and it, it's a lot more deeper. It's a lot deeper than you think that it's than just the, the, the face of the question. Okay? And I'll, I'll explain a little bit later. Okay. Um, and number two, you have to ask all the questions. If I didn't think it was important to ask, I wouldn't put the question in the presentation. It's important. That's why it's in there. Okay, I have taken out as much as I can from the presentation. I don't want a lengthy presentation. All right. So. Now we're going to talk about insurance okay. and some concepts that you need to know in insurance. Okay. Just, just, you, you just need to know general how to explain a, a few concepts. Number one, write this down, self-insurance. You need to understand what self-insurance is. David, with self insurance. That's a question. With self insurance. When someone is self insured, what is that? They pass away if they're in the house. How? Okay, is that right? No. Tiffany. What's self-insurance? Right. What does that mean? Explain it to me. What do you mean? I mean, for the huh? For the yeah, what yeah, you, you gotta just expound a little bit. What do you mean pay? Pay for it on your own. What does that mean? Okay, so let, let me explain what I'm doing here. Okay, you're going through the presentation, right? And like you guys, you look like you're paying attention. <laughs> right? So I think I'm important and everything I'm saying is resonating. <laughs> you know? And I say self insurance and. <laughs> they get it to you, right? <laughs> I've heard those words before. All right. And say, but say they really want to know. And they ask you, I'm, I'm sorry, you said self insurance. What does that mean? And then say you look at me like you just looked at me, right? Like I just explained it. <laughs> right? That was that look. Right? <laughs> I just said it. <laughs> I know you just said it. I didn't understand it. And because I asked you again, you don't understand it either. <laughs> right? So you said self insurance. Yeah, because you can pay for it on your own. A client's going to understand that? No. Huh? So go ahead and explain. I know you know it. Knowing it and being able to explain is two different things. Yeah. Your 
Rob. Yeah, my guess is that same that they have to cover anything that may happen with the case on it. So you can cover that. Yeah. Right. Income. You have the money. You have the money. You have the money. You have the money. Right. If you don't have the money, that's why you purchase insurance upon your death. The insurance company will give you five hundred thousand dollars. But if you have five hundred thousand, you're self-insured. Right. And, and, and listen, I always ask my clients if they understand that. How do I do it? I don't say, do you understand that? <laughs> OK, that is offensive. And you can say, does that make sense? Okay, even then, I don't do it. You know why, Peter? Because they say yes, but they don't get it. What do I do? If you guys know me, what do I say? If you've seen me on appointments or if you've heard my training, you may pick up on this. What do I say? Shandell. Uh, how much money do you have to Okay, uh, close. You're getting close. I'm like that you're thinking. Okay, I mean that. Kelvin. I mean, with, with me, you, you, you kind of allude to them already knowing, and it's just for me. How much money you saw? How long would your savings last? Okay. I, I like what you guys said, okay? Not you, Kelly, these two. Uh, <laughs> look, man, it's all black hands and thing. Okay, it works out there, okay? My wife's gonna work on her, but it ain't gonna work on me. <laughs> Donald's tried it, it don't work. Okay, now he's short black. You got the problem. Okay. But, okay. Oh my god. You know <laughs> so I want to confirm that they know self insurance. Okay, and that's what I want to do. Okay. Not insurance, not a need for insurance. I want to confirm that they understand the concept of self-insurance, which is you have enough money, you don't need insurance. You can still have insurance, you just don't need it. Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, what would you rather have? $500,000 in cash or $500,000 in an insurance policy? Then they understand it. <coughs> um, what would you rather have? $500,000 in cash or $500,000 in an insurance policy? <coughs> Let them answer. And look, this is not, it's a wrong answer for them to say insurance. Okay? It's the wrong answer. It's not a bad answer. Because that means they understand insurance. They want to get a policy. But they still don't understand insurance, right? Because you'd rather have the cash. Because the cash, you can use it while you're alive. Insurance is only good upon death. So when you die, they give the money. But if you have the 500000 you could use it while you're alive. Cash is better than insurance. But you don't say, do you understand it? That's not going to work. Okay. Now, look, this is just going on. This is not what we do in the presentation. I just want you to understand certain concepts. The second concept you need to understand. Income replacement. Income replacement. Income replacement is not a burial policy. Mm -hmm. Income replacement is not handing you a check. Hi, what's income replacement? Okay, you're right. How? Through insurance. How? Uh, so instead of handing them a check, that's the thing you would plan their future like that. Investing. Investing a death benefit to yield monthly income. Okay? That's income replacement. Okay, very simple. Hey, now look, just so you understand, okay? It's the client's money, okay? It's the client's money. So we cannot withhold their money, okay? But I do say that. I say, look, it's your money, but what we would advise you to do, Robert, is invest the money and then 
you withdraw the monthly income and we've replaced your income, right? And that makes <coughs> money last and grow and all those things, right? And we'll explain that and we have a visual in the presentation to show them, but that's income replacement. Okay, and the third concept is how much do you need? The need for insurance, what is your need? Okay, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Because remember, you are getting somebody, like some of you guys are awesome, right, Donald, whatever you sent out the other day, 133, I mean, you got somebody to get excited about spending $133 a month, okay, on insurance. That's a freaking big deal. That's a big policy. It's a, it's a huge commission. It's, it's, and I'm not saying that because the client always wins more than us, okay, so I'm not saying, but they got to keep that. They got to stick with it. You got to quote them the right way. You got to get the policy issue, get them paid on because you get five, 10 of those a month. You're making that 10,000 a month if you can do that. But you got to be an assassin. You got to be a sniper. You got to be a sharpshooter. You got to be great at the KT. And that, that's not just knowing the words, it's looking, it's body language, it's inflection, and all of that stuff we're going to talk about today. Okay. So, uh, first thing. Okay, after we went over the key concepts, ask all the questions. Okay, I know I already said that. I want to reiterate before we go into the questions. Ask all the questions. If they weren't important, I wouldn't put them in here. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Okay. So you guys know this, the waste money question, okay? Don, I'll hook you up, uh, you know, Casper, hook you up to the live sector. How much money do you waste on a daily basis? Okay, now I'm not talking about spending, but how much would you waste every single day, right? And he gives me a number and you walk it down. He says, I'm $20 a day, okay? So what do we learn from this answer? You've heard the question before, but you are looking for an answer. You, they don't know, right? In, in poker, there's there's a concept, right? It's called a feeler bet, right? What's a feeler bet? <laughs> Not you, Casper. <laughs> I would love to play poker with you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'll get your roll in 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. You make a bet just to gauge the same Just to see, right? Just to see. Just to see. You might win the pot, right? They might raise you. Like, oh, what? Okay. Right, they, they, they come over top of the hammer. You're just seeing, you're just testing the water. Just throw it out there, right? That's called a feeler bet. You're just feeling. What what can you learn from this? Right, right now, right? Right, what can you learn from that? This is not just for the dollar commitment that you're gonna use for insurance, okay? There is a lot that you learn from this question. Tia, what do you learn? Um, that they spend unnecessarily. Okay. So one, they're loose. They're loose. Lots of discretionary income. Admitting of wasting money. That those are those. That's okay. I've learned that. So not only do they waste money, but they're admitted to wasting money. Okay. You could also learn some of their spending. That I eat out every day. Okay. That that great. That's it. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. That's a slam dunk, man. That's a freaking alley-oop. Wait, wait, wait. You admitted me you're wasting money and it's just stupid food? Because some people, they waste money. They don't know where it is. Okay? That's a whole new kind of stupid. <laughs> Their money, they don't even know. So they're wasting it. They, don't, they, they make the money. They're living here. They have no idea how, what's happening. Right or wrong? Right. That's true. Okay, that's a whole different one. It's admitted, yeah, I, wait, I eat out, I eat out. Okay, right, they might say, they might give you more information. What's the opposite of that? Huh? Money's tight. That's a whole different, that's, that's operation, right? I don't know if you're, you're trying to take the little pencil out of the, the if you, you understand that game, it's a long game, right? I mean, a long, a long time ago, but that's what it is. You're like, oh, okay, get the wishbone out. <laughs> I'm doing heart surgery. I got to find 50 bucks. It's going to be hard to do that. Okay. 
Because some people don't waste money. They're tight. They're, they're just tight with their money. They know. No, no, no. I know to the dollar, man. I got Excel spreadsheet. It's color coded. I know. We know. Well, money's tight then. That's a whole different animal that you have right there, right? So it's not just give me the number. Oh, they gave me 20. No. Ask. Oh, okay. And talk. Then you might learn what? Husband waste. Wife doesn't. Wife waste. Husband doesn't. They both are tight. They both waste. That's a whole different. If, if Tia says she wastes money and Peter says he doesn't, well, then what? I'm going to have to still show tons of value because when people waste money, when, they, when people are tight, okay, they don't want to separate from their money and they are not going to really be persuaded emotionally. Okay. You got to say things to them later like, Peter, you wait. It's going to be more money. You got to use takeaways. You may not qualify. This is the best value you get. There's, it's a whole different animal. You're just logging this information for later. Okay. So here, right? Um, and I know it's a simple question, but you know, you got to, you got to really see, you got to look them in the eye when you, when you say, Hey, look, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen to a family? That's a great question. It's not just, Oh, I'm leading in for if something were to happen. I want to see what they're talking about, man. Look, I'm not, I'm not a gloomy person. I'm not a negative person, and I'm not a depressed person, okay? At least I don't think so. <laughs> I mean that. But I think about things like, what would happen to me if I'm not here, right? Like, I try to live healthy because it's like, all right, what if that something happens? What's going to happen? With my, I got little kids, man. Anybody think like that? Yes. Anybody just, just think a little bit like, hey, if something happened to me, what would happen, right? I, I feel responsible for caring for my loved ones. And so I, I say, hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? If they come off some off-the-wall stupid stuff, <laughs> okay, which they could, very, very strong possibility, right? Because presentation's cute, it's funny, here it gets real. Here we're showing death and what happens. Here we're showing we're, we're, we're explaining. We're creating a narrative. We're starting a story. We're, we're creating the waterfall that, hey, if you don't have a parachute, you're jumping out the plane. Your family's at risk. Okay, that's, that's what's happening at this slide. It's not just asking the questions. No, 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 no. This is it. This is the opening scene of the movie. You ever, you ever, I mean, I'm sure people watch the, the Dark Knight trilogy, right? That whole thing. Yeah. You ever remember what they do? They always show the, the full opening scene for the preview in the movie. I remember when Dark Knight, the Dark Knight, right? The second one, and they showed the opening scene with the, the bus and the, the bank robbery and the Joker. Yeah. And they showed it on the IMAX. So I watched an IMAX movie. And I saw, I, that was the greatest trailer ever. That's this scene. This, this is it right here for you. That's it. This is it right here. You're, okay, hey, what's the worst thing that happened to Hey, No, you're not. You're not expecting anything. You're just interviewing, hearing the answer. But if they say something, lose a job. If they say something, die prematurely. If they start telling their story about my father died earlier, or my, you know, whatever it is, great, right? If they say something, I mean, I, I can't think of something right now, but if they say something off the wall, obviously you got a lot of work to do, right? Because they don't understand it yet. Then we're going to ask the main questions. If something were to happen to you, God forbid, and you were to die today, would you want your family standard to be better, worse, or minimum stay the same? Okay? Great question. We want to see, right? We don't even want to stay the same. Honestly, stay the same is not a great answer. Okay? Now, they could say it in a way like at least stay the same, like, hey, you know, hopefully better, but I can't connect the dots there, but at least stay the same, okay? But we want better. And listen, if you get worse, if, which I, I, I really can't remember if I've ever got it. I'm sure I have. But if you get worse, okay, you got to really have the talk, Yeah. right? Because I'm not interested, Donald, in having a wrestling match with you. Okay? I'm not trying to sell you insurance. I will. But I, I'm trying to help you protect your family because, you know, 
When you die, it's a problem. Not if you die, when. It's going to happen. I'm not going to say it like that, but that's my mentality. So if I get better, great. If I get worse, if something happened today, though, if something actually did happen today. So, oh, great, Tyrone, you want your famous interview letter, but if, uh, better. If something did happen today, if actually did something did happen. Would your family standard of living be better? What are we looking for? Yeah, it would be. Okay, what do you mean? I have group insurance. So that means they thought about it. Now we just have to bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. They could say, I don't know. Okay, right? That's, that's great. We're logging that for information, but a lot can happen in this dialogue, right? Obviously, we're showing the slide. We're, we're, we're you know, the father disappears, right? All that stuff. I'm not going to go through that for the questions, okay? Then, if they go into... Income protection. Many of you guys take them, right? This is a filtering question. What are your top two? Or what's your number one? And, you, and they pick income protection or you lead them to income protection. Okay? When we say, how much coverage do you currently have? Got to ask them, right? Why? Well, they already said they have none. Okay? I would ask them again. I want them to say, we have nothing. Right? I do. Now, I don't say it like, in an accusatory way, I, I might be nice and polite about it, but I it, it's an admittance. Right? It's an admittance. Hey, we, we got nothing. This is the question right here, man. This is the question right here. We, and I'll show you why in a second. Do you feel overinsured, underinsured, not sure? Okay? We want underinsured. We don't want not sure. Always remember that. Not sure is not a great answer. Not sure can mean a lot of stuff. Not sure is not committal. I want underinsured. Not sure or overinsured is a red light. Okay? It's not a yellow light. If they say underinsured, that means, hey, I understand. We got a problem. We got a problem. We are not protected. I'm hearing everything that you're saying, and if something happened to me, it's a problem. Okay? We don't want not sure. Not like, like I, I when I get not sure, I, I, I know it's like, okay, that's not what I'm looking. Josh says to me, oh, you know, I'm not sure. That means like you think you're, you could be okay. Yeah. You think you're all right. And, and my mentality is we can't move on from this subject, okay? We got to have this buttoned up, 100% locked down, airtight. This is the foundation. We can't go cheap. We can't go weak. We can't cut corners because this, this house will crumble. Mm -hmm. And you die, you got $3,000 in your IRA. That's not cut. You got... I'm right after this, right after this, this training, I'm going to a funeral. Right after this, I'm leaving, right? I'm going to hit prayer, and then I'm going to go see somebody that I sat down with less than 10 years ago, and he passed away. And we're going to give this family 250000 So this is real life, all right? This is a real life business. This is not... You know, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, save the money. No, they're saving money, too. And that money, while it's a lot and good for them, and they work hard for that money, it's insignificant compared to that $250,000 debt benefit that we're going to give them. Right? And this is not, not a car accident. This guy developed a long-term illness. Dementia. Parkinson's. Right? They couldn't catch it when we did underwriting in medicals 10 years ago. And at, four, at 50 years old, we gave him a policy for less than $800 a year for $250,000. Think about that. And someone, an agent, recruited somebody's wife. And that wife got coverage for their family. From engaging them in the opportunity first, and then they became a client. And they learned and they practice all the stuff. They save money, all those things, right? So 
you know, when we say these things and, 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 you know, this, 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 how many, you know, it only, you know, we all say these things. It only needs to happen once. So it's going to have a lot more than once. Yeah, I, I don't know, 60, 70 clients now. I can count 70. Think about that. 70 clients passed away. It will happen for you too. You build a big enough business, you help a lot of families, it's going to happen. So, do you feel underinsured, overinsured? Not sure, okay? Um, no coverage, okay? <coughs> and we don't go through no coverage first, but I'll. Shoot. You are my phone. Okay. Where do I go right or left? I don't uh, right. This one. No. Left. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Just hit the house. Okay. They said no insurance. They say they're underinsured. They say they have no coverage. We still got to ask the questions. All right. I was talking to Shondell yesterday. Right? I was just asking her questions. And she said, I get, there are sometimes I get every commitment. And they still fight me on the quote, right? And you're right. That's going to happen. All right. That's, 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 you know, rubber hits the road. That's why we ask all the questions. Right. But that's why it's even more important to continue to ask the questions. Right. Because it's not that we don't, the, the sales process doesn't work. They just go through everything and then you, bam, you get a, a, you know, you run a quote. It doesn't work like that. You have to ask all the questions, hear them out, listen to them, sometimes make a recommendation before. But, and there are certain questions that are high priority questions, okay? So currently you have no, uh, you have no or very little life insurance protection on your own. Usually it's due to one from, didn't see a need for it, didn't think you could afford it, didn't get around to it. Which one best describes you? Okay, what do we get here? What do they usually say? What do they say? Didn't think they could afford it. Okay, didn't think they could afford it. Then what do you say? Um, normally, people think that life insurance is more expensive than it actually is, but we have policies for as low as fifteen dollars a month. And then I move on to the next question: But is protecting your family important enough? Okay. So, great. I'm glad, and I know that we've taught that in the past. Okay, and that's good. That's you need some dialogue after that question. Don't throw that fifteen dollars a month out. Okay. Do not throw that out there. Take that immediately out. Okay. And I'll explain why in a minute. Okay. You already probably understand why I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. Some of you guys understand. Okay. But you, you said, hey, a lot of people think it's a lot more um, expensive than uh, if it were affordable for you. Okay. And always remember that's why you always have to use these words for you. You can't deal abstractly because reasonable, that could be different things. Right? Reasonable for me could be $500 a month. Reasonable for Bill Gates is $10,000 a month. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right? So you, you can't use terms like that. Affordable, that's, that's an answer. Affordable for you. Affordable for you, which we're going to find out. We're going to find out what that is. But don't throw out the 15 because that, that just gives you a terrible basement. Okay? You said, <laughs> you said 15. <laughs> right? So you say, hey, so you, so you understand the value of insurance. You just thought it was very expensive. Well, if it's affordable for you, Trevon, if it's affordable for you, something you take a look at. 
right? Just, just question right after that, right? Um, didn't get around to it. They say didn't get around to it. Okay, well, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> and I'm not going to say it like, like, you know, Ron Popeil, you know, the biggest salesman in the world. I'm saying, oh, I'm glad I'm here. Or, hey, maybe, maybe now is a great time. Just to see if I can get a nod, see if I can, yeah, hey, look, you know, you're benefiting from this. I'm not, you know, look, all these things, okay, when I say these things, I'm, tr I'm trying to teach etiquette and professionalism. I don't want to teach you to be passive because if you're passive too much, that means you don't believe in your product. Mm -hmm. And you have to have high belief in your product, okay? We got the best product out there. It's what people need, and there's a tremendous value in what we're offering, okay? So, you know, sometimes you can be a little cute with it. All right, well, hey, I'm, I'm here, right? I'm not going to do it like, you know, <laughs> you know, like, you know I'm not doing anything stupid like that. Okay? That's cheesy and corny and, you know, I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't give me ideas, okay? <laughs> but, you know, you could confirm it with just, oh, hey, well, I'm glad I'm here. Or do you feel like now is a good time? Just ask. <coughs> if they say you didn't see a need for it, say, do you see a need for it? But now you see a need for it. I know at that time you didn't see a need for it, but now you feel like there's a need. Get a confirmation. <coughs> hey, but hey. Who, who was good in school here? Who did well in school? You did well? <laughs> yes, straight A's. Did you pay attention? Yeah. I took notes. You took notes? <laughs> well, what happens if you don't pay attention? I see it, right? Because this is obviously the problem is this is a little bit of a small group, so I can see you guys. Right? <laughs> That's fine. Subconsciously, so you're not going to go out. And you're gonna feel helpless. You're gonna be a victim. And you're gonna get in your feelings. Say, I don't know. And you're not gonna go out on appointments and you're gonna stay broke and then you're gonna be in this vicious cycle. Pay attention, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go on appointments with you. This is as good as you're gonna get, is me explaining it. Yes. So learn, so you can feel confident, so you can go see people. And, you, and when you're there, you're going to learn. And you're going to read people. And you might lose. You might not get the sale, but you're going to get better. Right? But you got to, you, you know, you came here Friday morning. Like, it's important, right? Don't freaking stare off. It's an hour and a half. It's 90 minutes. This isn't class. This isn't humanities class. In college. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. You deserve to be broke if you can't pay attention, man. I make $500,000 a year, dude. And that, 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 that's my primary income. Right? Like, I'm here. I'm trying to teach you. Just pay attention. Mm. These are big questions, okay? This is, this is the biggest question of the presentation so far. Okay? Now, it means more, Trevon, if you ask all the questions that preceded this. But this is it. You can never forget this question. Is protecting your family important enough? Right? Is protecting your family important enough you would be willing to begin setting aside some money each month to take care of this? Okay? Now, Donald, you don't have to say it like I just said it. Okay? But you got to say it clearly. You can't mumble it. This is not one where you whisper it. Okay? Now, look, if, if normally, right, in high pressure situations, you talk faster. And louder, which a lot of people do. Tone it down, talk slower. If in high pressure, pressure situations you mumble and talk down, speak up, be more articulate, mm -hmm. enunciate better. But is protecting your family important enough you would be willing to begin setting aside some money each month to take care of this? Yes. I don't understand what you were saying. You're saying if you're if you normally are kind of a slow, soft talker, then when you get to that question, you should be 
opposite of that? Okay, so that's a good question. Okay, so if I say this, okay, because there's two types of people when this question is going to come up. Okay, there is. I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> um, they speak loud. That's true. Okay, and they get. I mean, I just got to say, high pitch voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke. Okay. <laughs> hey, Josh, you asked for the money. Yeah, you what? So if if I'm gonna get loud, it's gonna make the client nervous. Yeah. Okay, so you know, if I if I'm just a little bit too aggressive and you know, it's protecting your family, and I'm, and I'm just a little bit too gregarious, a little bit, you, you know, then you want to tone it down. But some people are going to mumble. If we're saying, yeah, we're <laughs> and they don't say it. And they haven't said it loud enough. They haven't elevated it, right? So it just has to be clear. If, if I were to err on one side, maybe a little bit more em emphatic and a little bit more forceful, but not... You know, this is something where you got to be good, right? So, and this is another great question, back to back, right? You just get, they don't have insurance. They said they needed it. They said they could put money away to it. And if we can put together a, a program that was that would be affordable for you, is there any reason you wouldn't implement the program? Okay. Now look, even if I've asked that here, I'm going to ask it because I'm reading off the slide. Okay. All right. Um, employer coverage. I'm not going to go through all the questions there. You know the questions. I'll I'll reiterate. Group insurance is probably our biggest enemy. Okay, especially here. There may be other locations, other parts of the country, but here in corporate America and the, the home of the federal government, people really love their jobs. They think their jobs are going to take care of them. Okay, they are bought. They got. They got like literally their company name tattooed <laughs> on their neck. Oh. All right, Boeing. Oh my God. Oh God. Analyst. <laughs> they would. They thought it was like appropriate. They would do it. Right, and that's how much. Oh no, you don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> Right? Lockheed. <laughs> right? So you got to understand. So we got to explain and go through all the questions. You got to unload. Okay, you got to unload on group. Show the videos. Explain to them there's a difference between the company that provides the benefits and your company. I'm sure your company is great. Mm -hmm. But this is the contract and this is the company. Even the TSP, the federal government, the family. It's underwritten by whatever it is, Minnesota Life or whoever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So, cash value, then term, okay? Now, as we go through, um, can I draw on this or no? Hey, Brandon said you have an interview here. She just said me. Bauer, I mean, they probably came early this time. So. Okay, so now we're going to come to the need. Okay, and for your knowledge, okay, what are some general numbers that I've given you in the past? Okay, you don't want to um, give these numbers to the client, but what do, what, what, do, what do we know in terms of insurance need? What's the easiest formula? Ten times. Ten times. Okay. So the, the biggest thing is ten times, right? So if somebody asked me and without context as to how much insurance I need, and I had to give one answer, that's what I would say. Ten times, ten to twelve times your annual income. Okay. But there's no context there. Okay. I don't know how much you have saved. I don't know any of it. Okay. I don't know. You know, but we're just strictly talking about need. Ten to twelve times their income. How much should they spend? 
What have I told you? Huh? One to three percent. Okay. They should spend one to three percent of their income on life insurance. Now, many variables, depending on how young they are, how healthy they are, their medical questions, the amount they, they need, if they're in the sweet spot, all those things, okay? So, okay, so I gotta do this with my fingers, so it's not gonna look bright, but, so you've, you've heard me say this, okay? There's the need, okay, and there's a fourth. Now, anybody read a book before they see the movie? Yeah. Huh? What? Yeah. I know you guys don't read, so what tell me? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Huh? Yes. 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 Twilight. Yes. Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'd like to see you guys get excited about something. Twilight. Like Crazy rich people. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Usually if you read the book before the movie, the movie spoils the book, right? You don't like the movie as much. Do you know why that is? Yeah, okay, they may change it. You have an expectation, right? So I, I think the biggest one for me, okay, and I think regardless of this is if this is it for you, this is definitely our client experience. Okay, when I read a book before the movie, and they say, oh, you know, say it's a book about basketball, right? I have in my mind created a picture of this player. How they dribble, how they look, how, and it could say 6 2, but I have a look. And then when they get the character, when I see Omar Epps, <laughs> that ain't him. <laughs> That's not him. And it's not in the box of what I have. Right? And so all the, the, the movie now is on. Defense the entire movie, and then it's the, this part because I've already I have an expectation of what in my mind what the character's supposed to do, what they look like, and the biggest thing is the look. That's the biggest thing, right? And so I'm like, oh, well, that's not how I pictured it or envisioned it, or you know, something like that, right? So we have a client, and you have talked about the need a lot, and you said a four. And you've gotten the commitment there. And if this, if your number is not in this box, okay, you're in trouble. You are not getting that sale, okay? And you probably will never get it. Now, what can distort the image, which I'll talk about? So we ask. The need questions. The need questions are based on dime, right? Which is debt, income, mortgage, educational expenses, okay? These are just commitment questions. They're just to engage them. They're filtering questions. They're, they're uh, exploring. They're just, to, okay, I know I need it. It's the response. Well, then, no, no, now we're going to really find out. Okay, we're going to kind of paint some pictures for you. If some, hey, has anyone, Donald, has anyone ever shown you how much you need? Let me walk you through it. No, no one said, right? And if he's the right person, if he's answered the questions properly, he's giving you especially the green lights. I'm underinsured. I can commit money to this. I didn't see a need for it, but I need it now. If it were affordable, I will put aside money, Right. You have to educate them a little bit. Teach them what, how we're doing this. Okay, so if something happens to you. Would you want your family to still be able to live in the same house? Take care of the mortgage, right? I don't say pay it off, okay? Because pay it off gives them a finite dollar amount. If they have a $300,000 mortgage, you may not give them coverage for $300,000. I'll tell you why in a second. Okay? 
Then I do educational expenses. Or I do the debt. Sorry, I do the debt. If we recover a debt, how much would it be? Right? I want to find out. That's a great question. That's that's more data collection. Right? 50,000, 60,000. Okay, is that everything? Don't don't get bogged down by the details. That is, if you were to write a check that would cover everything, what would that be? And, and I say it. Student loans, car payments, uh, store cards, credit cards, any outstanding debt that you may have. What would have, you know, how much would be? 57,000, 37,000, 27,000. Okay. Kids college, and remember, we're not just quoting insurance. We're protecting families. You gotta get them saying their children's names. Mm -hmm. How old are they? I'll say that. They're two and four. Really? You could, you're gonna say some neglectful shit? You got a two and four year old? I hate saying it like that, but that's the truth. You, you got a two year old. You got a four year old. Huh? Yeah, you got you got an 18 months, mm -hmm. 11 months. That's exactly right, right? What are their names, right? You got to, This is this is real, man. You don't have protection. You got no insurance. What are their names again? Oh, how old are they? Right? They say it. They get that. Right? I know they're not going to want to write the check, but we got to get it to them, right? Mm -hmm. So. Then we, we show income replacement, okay? Uh, or we, hey, if something happened to you, uh, how much money would they need to put on a monthly basis? And then, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not on the uh, presentation, but I'll show it in a second. But you can click on the I, and then there's a hypothetical that shows the a death benefit of five or 600,000 being invested. So even though you got $600,000 of in, insurance, that money, you ended up using it for 1.2 million or whatever it is, right? So, but how much did you? And I always ask that: How much insurance did you purchase? Six hundred thousand. But what did you get? This is how it works, right? So they can start seeing. Okay, hey, we have a plan. If something happens, and when something happens, I'll be we'll, we'll be okay financially. <clears throat> so we go through the dime. What can distort the image, right? If they're in, if they in their mind see eight hundred thousand. Okay, that distorts the picture. And you come back to them with 250,000 and I say to you, well, Val, this is all you could afford. Because they're like, wait, you said I needed 800. 250, that's a lot. Well, it's not in your budget. Well, one, they could be offended. Mm -hmm. Even though it's true, it's an accurate statement. But that's because you put the picture out too quick. And there's no need for it. Okay? Because getting them to apply for coverage and getting them to pay for coverage is two totally different things. And anybody can apply for the right amount, but can they afford it? Can they stick with it? You got to crawl before you walk. And some protection is better than none. And here's the reality, okay? And, and this is just the truth. It's not that you won't ever see the client. And it's not that you only have one shot to get it, Peter. <coughs> but it's your best shot. It's your best shot. There are people that come back to the dealership. But that's few and far between. You get them there. You close them. While, while you've gone through the whole presentation, it's fresh, you take your shot. And it's your best shit, best time to make it. Why? You've already hit seven in a row. Just need the, the buzzer beater, right? They can come back, Donald, but it's going to be rare. I'm not saying it's, it's unacceptable, okay? But I don't want to mess it up because of something like this. I'm going to give them the most that they can afford. Okay, and which fits in their need. All right. So after I ask, after I ask all the dime questions, then I'm going to go to the fin worksheet. Pull up the fin worksheet real quick.
So I, I, like I said, I don't even write this stuff over here. I might keep, keep it in my notes for data collection. I don't really want them to see it. Um, I, I may want to know how much they have in debt. If I have not got great commitments, okay, or I feel like I just need some icing on the cake, I'll ask them how much they have saved up. You know, how much you have also, how much you have saved up? Yeah, I think it's a great question because if they got nothing, like you got nothing, you got two grand, right? You're not gonna say it like that, but hey, you have two thousand. You don't want to protect your kids. You got two thousand dollars saved up. You need insurance. Not even close. You have debt. Your family's one hundred percent dependent on your income. And the next stuff. <laughs> 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 so I'll ask them how much they need I mean how much they have saved up and go up a little bit okay I'll re-ask the question up top if something were to happen you would you want your standard living to be safe uh, a little better or worse. Ask them again, right? They're going to say better. We're going to kind of re, you know, uh, re-emphasize how important this is. And then this is the money question, right? How much you feel comfortably? How much do you feel you could comfortably put towards this on a monthly basis to make sure your family is properly protected? Okay. Now, this is what we're changing right now. Remember, what do we do here? Always put monthly, never say annually, okay? Obviously, you know, it's a lot easier to digest when you say monthly. And you always split it, okay? We learned this from Peter a long time ago. I think it's probably the smartest thing ever. Okay, how much could each of you put monthly? And get a monthly amount. Okay, so I say, you know, Peter, how much could you put monthly? Tia, how much could you put monthly? Understand the ranges. If you know a little bit more, if, if say for example you've quoted or done something, or you know you can you can narrow it down a little bit because these are pretty large ranges, okay. And you can do it properly. And you want to say seventy-five to 100, 100 to one hundred fifty, one hundred fifty plus. Okay, that's fine. If not, keep these, but get two commitments from each of them. So Peter, how much could you commit to a monthly basis? Is that something you can see? How much could you commit? Okay. If it's possible to get a program that's smarter in every way, is there a reason you would allow us to implement that new plan? Okay. Now, when we're writing it down, and remember, this is sticker shock. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sticker shock is the shock or dismay experienced by the potential buyers of a particular product on discovering its high or increased price. They see a box, they see a character in the movie, they feel the value of this insurance should be $60, and you quote them $120, which is fair, it's reasonable, it's the greatest thing in the world, it doesn't matter. They don't see, it's, it's not in the same box. And now you are on defense and you probably missed it, okay? That's why this question of the, the range is the most important thing. Now... We always want to start with our new plan. We all, we're going to give a triplicate of choice. It's going to be within their budget. Okay? Now, look, if you want to know an advanced chess move, okay? I don't know if this is for you. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Bob. Okay? An advanced, I mean, the, the super advanced chess move, if you're not happy with the commitment, okay? I'll tell you, the, I mean, this is this is like, Checkmate. I mean, this is like, yo, I, I'm going to get you with my queen right in the two moves. Okay? You appear to not be happy with the commitment. So say Peter and Tia give me $50 each. And I'm actually happy with that. 
They say they give me 50, and I'm good with getting a hundred dollar check. I'm good with a, with a 75, a hundred or 125. I'm good with it, but I'm going to appear not to be happy. Say, Hey, look, Peter, Tia, you know, how much did you say you needed? Did something happen? How much? You know, I would go through it, just rework it a little bit. Get my serious face on and say, look, how old's your son? How old's your son? How old's Liam? Four. Four. Now look, I, my job is to put something together that you can afford. That's the number one thing, and I'm going to do that. Okay? But we're talking about your family. We're talking about your son. He's four. And, and, and when I give a coverage amount, look, it may seem like a lot of money. Because um, whatever it is, you know, is a, you know, Fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money. If I give you a check for fifty thousand dollars, that's a lot of money, right? But if you die and I give your wife fifty thousand dollars and you have a four-year-old son and Liam's there for it, it's not a lot of money, right? What am I doing? And I'm still gonna find. I'm still gonna go in the range, but I want to just see if they mentally can commit to more. And then so sad, so, so I mean, look, I'm going to try affordability, but look, this is your family. I mean, you, you think this is the best you can do? And they may say yes, but at least they're going to feel like, I can't go lower than this. And see, me, I've narrowed the box now. I almost have an image. I know. Right? So I'm narrowing the box. Then I give them the ranges, okay? You always give the biggest one first, right? We're going to give a triplicate of choice. And the one you want in the range, the best value is going to be in the middle. And you always give the highest first. Why do you always give the highest first? First, because it's price conditioning, right? When you give something higher in the beginning, the other ones look lesser, okay? So you always give the most. So you say, hey, look, this is the range. You guys said, you know, 75, but you were very firm there. So... Tia, and what do we do? Never, ever, ever combine the dollar amount. I don't care what the quote says. If, if on, I know the Primerica app is going to say $120. Okay? Never say $120. Say $60 and $50 or whatever the number is, right? It's $60 for you, Peter, $60 for you, T. Even though it's going to come out as a one monthly amount, and sometimes because of banding, the dollar amounts are going to be lopsided. Let's say Shondell's is 51 and, or, you know, uh, Mice is 51 and Shondell's is $12, right? Because that's that's good to even say that. Say, hey, look, was we we do it, we have a bandy. So she's going to be like, yeah, I definitely going to do mine. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> right? Mine's only 12. Right? That's what she's thinking. So you always want to give it. So, and that helps you too, right? Because if something happens and Mike gets declined and Shondell wants her policy, that helps you protect your business. So you always split. You say, hey, that's 60 for you, 60 for you. Never say 120, $250,000 each. That's the maximum I would suggest. You don't need any more than that. Okay? Based upon exactly what you said in your true need, this is the need. And we'd be able to take care of everything, invest it, and your family would be fine, all that stuff. And that'd be $50 for you, $50 for you. And then this is the bare minimum, whatever, $40. This is the, this is, I, I would never, I wouldn't recommend you go any lower than this. Which one of these do you, fit, do you feel fits your needs and your budget? Which one do you think feels affordable for you? Like that pick. And then you close with the process closed. But when you bring out those numbers, okay, and you give that range, that middle one should be ideal for you. Okay, the smallest one should be slam dunk. There's no way I'm not getting this. Mm -hmm. No way, it's impossible. They've given me every commitment, every question, every green light. There is no sticker shock here. I got a commitment for both. Here it is. The minimum we're getting. Okay, now look, where, did, where could this get thrown off? If they have a policy, okay? And here's what I'm noticing with a lot of you guys, okay? Because I get a lot of calls, all right, from you. And I ask people, 
I love it when clients have a policy. I love it because you, you already have a little bit of a picture. You're not going to get sticker shock. What's the, the, the worst mistake you can make when they have a policy? It's not not getting the policy. Obviously, you get the policy. But say, Tyrone, you meet me and my wife. I'm paying two, $200 a month for $150,000 of coverage each. That's actually what happened to me. Okay, that's what you have. Okay. So the, the mistake that people make, what do you think the mistake that people make there is when, when quoting? <coughs> what do you think? doesn't mean you're getting a $200 policy. That's a big mistake. Oh, yeah, I got it, $200. No. Listen, in their mind, I'm just telling you how the client feels. They're getting more for that $200 than you're giving them. Okay? So you can't give them just $200 of insurance. They can choose $200, but they want more coverage for less. They don't want more coverage for the same. They got to pick that later. Everybody understand what I just said? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to quote them 200 because they're paying 200. No, then they didn't save anything. You quote them the same coverage for less. Then you can show them the value. And then if, if they feel they said I'm underinsured, okay, well, look, hey, I just want to compare apples to apples and you give them the basement. Then say, look, if you like more, let's talk about that. If you feel like, hey, you know what? I, I like more coverage. Because what would interest you more? Better protection, more protection, better rate of return, less fees. And you can ask, but automatically it's not you quote $200 a month. Okay, that, that is stupid. You want to give more coverage for less money. That's the slam dunk. Mm -hmm. But it's good when they have a policy because they understand private insurance. And they have a picture in their mind of what they should be paying. Okay. Any questions about what we've covered so far? Yes. When it's lopsided, like you said, 15 and 12. You think it's better to say 15 and 12? I've had both clients say, oh, well, yeah, why is mine so much cheaper? Or do you think it would be better to say 15 and 15? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I have had that. So what I say to people, and I, and I felt it's worked. <clears throat> I've never done it where I say, well, it's just 26 we get. Um, I say, look, we, we have a banding. We have something called banding, so we give a bulk, right? And since you're the, the spouse prior, we put everybody on the same. One, because then you, there's less policy fees. Um, and two, um, you didn't have to take advantage of the bulk discount, which you are. So that's why yours is significantly less. So really, it's kind of a no-brainer for you to add on. It's, you know, we want that for our clients. So I, that's, I say something along those lines. Um, mm -hmm. It could be problematic if you said 50 and 50 because if one of them gets rated or something like that, and they have that dollar amount fixated on that. On that. All right, mm -hmm. yeah, then. It's not accurate, right? but I understand what you're saying. There's there's a psychology to it. Um, because I guess you could say, well, <coughs> yeah, why, why am I so high? And I say yours isn't so high. Yours is just very low because you get the ball. What else? Questions. So. Um, another situation, when I split it, sometimes one spouse would pick their option in plan one, and then the other spouse would pick their option in plan. Do you And were you able to change the coverage amounts? I think you can, but I think it. Okay, so change it, and then you say, you can say okay, well, look, if I adjust it, because our calculation to give some of the bulk discounts. If I do yours in here, this is what it would be. And you give them still, you still split it. Yeah. But I mean, look, if someone says that, that's great. If someone says, I'll pick this and this, they, they pick. 
right? Mm -hmm. So just make it work somehow, somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, apply for coverage. Here's how it works, explain the process closing. Here, here's a big thing too, okay? And I, look, this is not an indictment on judgment, okay? I'm just telling you what's happening so you guys have better strength, mm -hmm. okay? Get in a good market. Okay, what do I mean by that? All right. Like I said, don't feel some sort of way when I say this, okay? Remember, I sent this post out a long time ago. Right? Don't get in the feelings. There's no money there. Yeah. Okay. What kind of clients are we sitting down with? They don't call back. They don't call anybody back. Just, you know, don't feel bad. That's weird on them, not you. Okay? They can't return a phone call. Do they care about protecting their kids? And listen, you write a lot of business, right? How many of your clients get rated? How many come back? A few. How many? 50%? 40%? 30. 30. Think about that. I think it's more. People are sick, man. They need to get this coverage. Like when I see that, this is not theory. I'm looking at our top producer. <clears throat> And when she writes business, they come back, blood pressure, diabetes, something happens, they get rated. They got to pay 20, 30 percent more. What does that mean? People are lucky to get covered. So these people are not calling back. They got ailments. Some of them get declined. That means you need to see a doctor. We're not going to say it like that, but I mean, look, this is serious, man. This is a real business. We do medical exams. You get a free medical exam. For not, and they can discover something like when... When I see these products, they got rated, they get this, high blood pressure was found. Right? You know, you know, heart disease kills 30% of people prematurely. So when people have broad blood pressure or, or cardiac arrest, you know, this stuff can be prevented. If they go to the doctor, they can see something, right? So when we're out there, we're protecting those kids. And I know it's, it's we're trying to do this, and I give these analogies, and I try, no, man. Like I said, this is real life. You know where I'm going right after this. And you think about this, this, this wife emailed me the day, the morning he passed away. She goes, hey, I just want you to know with a heavy heart, Ricky passed away. Let me know what I have to do. And I'll take care of you. The more, I mean, not even 12 hours. Right? I mean, just think about that. So when we're out there, we're sitting down with people. I know they don't know what they, they don't know what they don't know. Right? Yes. So I have a question. Um, I'm trying to, you know, it's, 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 um, I just found out that my aunt, she has two life insurance, she has the two cousins. I'm trying to convince her to sit down with herself with Jenny here. Um, she had her job, but she won't, but she, she won't, like, I don't know how to explain to her, hey, no, this one's a sustainable example, or, you know, we have now, and she won't budge at all. I don't know how to. Yeah, it's stuff. It's stuff. I mean, look. You here's the, here's the thing. Okay, um, no one client nor one recruit will ever make or break your business. All right, and that I think is the biggest for everybody in here. Right, that's the that's the definition of striking out. You strike out, you go back to the plate. Don't wear it on you, man. Right? You ask somebody, they need it. You know, you know how many clients I've sat down with, they needed it, they had every re they needed this opportunity. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it. <clears throat> what am I gonna do? Right? Like you just go share the information, right? I mean, you can't you can't save everybody. You just can't as much as you want. And I'm not acting like we're high and mighty, we're noble. You don't cast judgment, you say it to everybody and you go handle your business, man. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and you talk to as many people as possible. The worst thing that can happen. Is that look that you just gave me where a frustration of somebody saying something to you and you taking it and wearing it on the next person mm -hmm. okay because listen for every every one that I don't want to say this is successful okay but for every client that did the right things and then God's plan was to take them from here and you go and you deliver there are 50 clients that said no to me, right? And I'm not going to go 
happily at 12 o'clock to go see this family or one o'clock sorry but i will go knowing them in what a great company mm -hmm. and what if i would have quit or somebody else would have quit so i didn't write this policy right somebody in that's not here anymore right so what if i didn't recruit people what if i didn't talk to people what if i gave up you never know who you affect on your journey for success because mm -hmm. as, as many people as you guys that are making it happen there's a bunch of people that quit on me there's a bunch of people that said that lied to me, that that insulted me on the way out. Mm -hmm. We don't do it for them, right? And I'm not saying like I'm noble. Some of that stuff might be warranted, right? I'm not perfect, not if I need. But the company, I try to do my best, keep moving forward, keep talking to people, find other people, right? Nobody in this business I knew before. I always tell people, nobody in here in this room, not one person in here. Mm -hmm. It all came from friends, from referrals, from talking to people, from staying with it, from being persistent. I'll never, ever let anybody else determine what I'm going to do. Ever. I never, ever have let that happen. Ever. That's how you're going to be every single day. It could be your mom, it could be your dad, right? My uncle, my mom, my mom's brother. I love him. You know, my mom's, my dad, well, my, my mom's brother came here to live in this country. He lived with us. My dad put him up, right? I have, that's my mom's brothers, and I'm their kids. I have a sister. I know how close I am with my older sister's kids. Nothing I wouldn't do for them. Didn't give me an appointment. Didn't give me an appointment, <clears throat> right? Now, I could, I could be upset, and I could say the business doesn't work. <laughs> I say, oh, man, because he said this, He's my uncle. I respect him. He's my my mom's brother. He don't make more money than me, right? He started a consulting business, right? Because he was consulting. He worked at Freddie Mac. He went out on his own, and he tried to ask me and my sister for contacts. So he wanted. He didn't do a point with me, but then he asked me. <laughs> what do you think I said? No. Man, <laughs> <laughs> hey, make I'm paid. <laughs> Yeah. There's sometimes I'm a bigger yeah. person. But you mess with me in my business. Yes. <laughs> you mess with me in my business, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Loyalty is a two way street. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Don't cross me, okay? Yeah. Like, no, you asked me, I needed your help. Who are you? Oh, that's cool. Do your thing. I'm not going to hate on you. Do this. What are you asking me for? Right? You would help me. I help you if you help me. If you're not, then I'm going to find somebody to help me. Mm. I always, I, I, I use an analogy, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> This this business is a journey, okay? And it's not a journey, it's not a walk, okay? You're you have anybody ever moved anything extremely awkward, right? Like a, a big suitcase or something that you have to carry, yeah. okay? Call a rock, okay, that you have to carry. And it is not easy. Your back is sore, your legs, you your arms are burning, and it, you gotta carry this a hundred yards. Okay. So here's what I expect. Number one, get out of my way. Okay. Just don't impede me, okay? Just get out of my way, that's one. Two, if you could encourage me, that'd be great, okay? But Donald, I'll be damn sure if you tell me to drop it. It's too heavy, quit, give up, right? Don't get in my way. I'd love for you to encourage me, I really would, I need help. I, I love encouragement. I like to do this with people I know. But if that's not you, definitely don't encourage me to drop it. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't encourage me to drop it. And people kind of fit into those categories, right? Now, look, I, hey, look, if, if, if somebody comes around and I talk to my brother and he's not interested in the very beginning, but he comes around, yeah, I'm not saying like, but if, if I try to do an appointment with you and then you literally try to do an appointment with me, that that I'm not I'm not now look some of you guys do that God bless you okay you might be more religious than me <laughs> okay pray for me okay I'm petty all right so you know if you don't do an appointment with me I'm not I'm definitely not gonna do an appointment but I just thought it was funny that he didn't want to help me but then he has the nerve to you know what yeah, I mean yeah. but you don't think I have a real business and now you have something and this is a real thing and you got the nerve to ask me. 
Yeah. Right? I asked you. I expected you to do that. You didn't. That's cool. Yeah, I respect you. I'm, I'm nice to you, but I'm, I'm not going to help you in your business. You didn't help me. And, I, and, and at that time, I would literally, and I didn't talk to me, asked my sister, right? And my <laughs> sister got licensed with me and she was training. My older sister's close to her then because, like, you know, my parents would leave the house to work and he babysit my little sister, right? I mean, my older sister, right? But if it was me and he asked me and he said, hey, do an appointment with me, because I didn't have any good contacts in Book America, he asked my sister, what the pay you made? I will say, yeah, I'll do it. Buy an insurance policy. I wouldn't even do an appointment. You buy an insurance policy, I'll do it with you. Like, that's. No, we're, this is it. It sounds good. This is what's going to happen. Right? And I just value my time and my business. Yeah. I, you don't have to be rude. You don't have to be unprofessional the way I am. So you know what? <laughs> and, and some people, as long as they, as long as they help you, that's okay. They, if they sat down with you, awesome. They don't take it, that's okay, man. Right? Maybe they'll take it later. Maybe they say, no, not now. <clears throat> you know? Don't let people be rude. Don't, don't have a backbone. Don't, be, don't, be, yeah. don't let people be disrespectful. But if all you asked for was an appointment they gave it to you, what? That's it, right? You keep going, right? You know how many people, they, they see me later, two, three years later, hey, are you, what's going on? Are you still doing it? And I say yes, and they're shocked. Like, oh, really? You're still, mm -hmm. you're still doing it? Yep. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Is there, oh, God's around the you know, We're still miserable, still hate work, still walking dead, still whatever it is. And that's why you got to keep going. You keep, you're still excited. You've read a lot of books. You're a lot better. And you, you know? And then you're in financial independence life. And then victory. <laughs> What's victory? Be you going to school with your son, and you're the only dad there, or only mom there, or whatever it is, or, or they tell you, it, you know, your your daughter's introducing you and says, "Oh, my dad runs his own business." Mm -hmm. Victory could be all the friends coming over to your kids because you got the cool. Mm -hmm. Victory could be, hey. I want to invite you over to my house. And you send the address because you know they're going to riff in it. <laughs> right? Victory could drive by in the car that you want. Whatever it is, man. Or victory could just be you opening an office and, and having real stuff, like a grand opening, and they're at somebody else's office. That's where they work. Right? So I, I'm not saying you don't, you don't take a crap on people on the way out. Don't do that. It's not, it's not going to help you. Okay, but don't ever let people affect you. Ever you you run your play, you have your own agenda. Don't get down. Don't get right. You keep moving. You keep talking to people. And I'll leave with this one thing. Somebody said this a long time ago when I started. They said, "Look, imagine your life and you're successful and you have money and you're financially independent." He goes, "You'll be talking about different things, knowing different people, doing different things." That is the most true statement anyone, and I don't know why that always stayed in my head. It's true, right? Am I me? Absolutely. But I'm talking about different things. I'm doing different things. I'm thinking different things. I have a whole new circle of friends, and my life's awesome. And you know what? My friends are still talking about if Bao Ju didn't run down Doug Cushion, we would have won states. In 1997, literally, if we would have beat Chantilly, we'd be state football. That was 20 years ago, man. <laughs> that was literally in the 90s. And they're still talking about it because the best days of their life are gone. And yeah, some of the best days of my life are gone too, but I got way better memories to make. And I'm not talking, I'm going to make, I'm not talking about Having kids, that's all. I'm talking about you, your freaking highlight film. You can always defer and say, My kid, yeah, of course, of course, I live for my children, man. I'm talking about stuff that I'm gonna make winning the trophies, signing a house, all those things. Me, for me, not for them. That, that's a cop out for you. You go do it for you, you go win for you, and then everybody else benefits from your success. But I'm not talking about that. It's you, you go do it. So, tomorrow. 9 30. All right. Uh, I need help. Uh, if people, we need to take, take these black chairs. Rob, count how many chairs we have. We got to take them over to Tyson's. If anybody can shoot over there, put a few in their car, and then uh, whoever's in Tyson's, are you going to Tyson's? Okay.
Maybe you can coordinate somebody just to get them and take them up. Uh, we're allowed to put them in that storage room. Um, if anybody can help, I know I'm the family has a big car um, or can head that way. Um, even if we coordinate where two or three can go in a car and then take them up because we're not going to have chairs tomorrow. Meaning we can't take chairs from the other conference room, so we got to start moving some chairs over there um, so we can properly equip them. We will have op meeting. I'm excited about it. Look, we are now having, we're at capacity most of the op meetings, which is great. It's a great problem to have. Make sure your guests are dressed up and they come on time. Because if they come too late, I'm sending them out. Last, last meeting was a debacle. I did it because I think it was like one of the first of the year or there was weather issues, something like that. And I let people come in tremendously late. It's not going to happen. It ruined it for everybody else. They're coming in. I'm not saying that everybody has to be dressed up, okay? But make sure they are dressed appropriately, okay? If they look like they're asleep and they should be asleep and their clothing attire <laughs> puts them to sleep, they're not getting in, okay? Tell them to dress up. All right, I'm serious because we have other guests that came and they're ready to learn and they're dressed up. Tell them no tennis shoes, no this, no that, right? I'm dressing up now. I'm not, if I'm not wearing my tennis shoes, I don't want them wearing their tennis shoes. All right, so training tomorrow, 9.30. We'll have our off meeting. Let's see if we can uh, take, the, um, take the chairs over there. Thomas is going to help me with my thread real quick. And, uh, the people that are here. I didn't do it last week. All right, team up here. One, two, three. <laughs>